So, hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Real Estate Investor. This is Josh Cantwell, your host. Uh, and today I have a fantastic conversation, fast and furious, down and dirty, a quick 20 minute interview with Andrew Shutsky. He is the founder of Redline Equity LLC, he's a real estate syndication firm specializing in acquisition, improvement, and management of large apartment buildings. Uh, he has been in real estate over 14 years and started back in 2007 with his own personal house hack. He's currently an active investor as both a GP and an LP in over 1,100 units. Um, and what's great is that when we get into this interview, you're going to hear about how he was able to get into two deals as a general partner within his first five months in multifamily syndication. Uh, we're also going to talk specifically about number one, what Andrew is doing differently today based on the rising and dropping interest rate environment and how he's positioning his debt. Number two, we're going to talk specifically about his structure of his syndications and why he loves 1970s to 1990s vintage properties. Uh, number three, we're going to talk about how Andrew separated himself instead of just being you know, one of those guys with shiny object syndrome, bouncing around from strategy to strategy, from webinar to webinar, from podcast to podcast, how he was able to close two deals within his first five months as a multifamily syndicator. And finally, some advice that Andrew and I would both give to our younger former selves. And you're going to love this interview on Accelerated Real Estate Investor with me, Josh Cantwell, and my, my guest, Andrew Shutsky from Redline Equity. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Andrew, listen, thanks so much for joining me on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Thanks for being here. So happy to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Absolutely, man. I'm excited to talk a little bit about, you know, your money-making strategies and syndication and your growth. Uh, but anytime I've got somebody relatively new, a new friend on the show, um, I'd like to hear what they're up to today. Like this week, this month, what are you working on that you're pumped about? And just kind of then secondly, a little bit of your take on the market about what's kind of happening in the marketplace and any adjustments that you're making. So just as you kind of introduce yourself to our audience, tell us something that you're excited about that you're working on. Absolutely. And I love to share. So it's very timely. Right now, we are finalizing negotiations on a 281 portfolio in Greenville, South Carolina. We are, as you know, from my bio and background, a multifamily syndication firm and working for uh, on a second acquisition in Greenville, South Carolina. So couldn't be more excited. Uh, as you mentioned, more and more harder to find deals these days. Like you have to be very cautious, you know, with debt, the, everything going on in the debt market. You know, raising capital, it can be more challenging in times of recession and pending over our heads, but really excited about this new, uh, it's a, actually a portfolio of assets in Greenville, South Carolina. Nice. So when you say portfolio of assets, are you, is it like a mixed use? Is it all apartments? Is it some duplexes? What do you mean? It's, it is, it's all apartments. It's two different properties, right? So both over a hundred units, but we're buying them as a package, uh, just made more sense that way. Scattered site. Yep. Got it. Love it. Yep. What, what did you find appealing about this acquisition? What was it that kind of stood out? Help our audience understand yep. a couple of the characteristics of the deal that you liked when you penciled it out. What made it something that you wanted to pursue? So we're, we're value add investors. We like to go in and find properties with, you know, a substantial amount of upside. Ideally, you know, interiors haven't been touched in a while. Rents haven't been touched in a while. And honestly, in this market, it's really hard to come by something like that. And I think buying either one on their own wouldn't have made as much sense from an economy of scale perspective and renovations. But the fact we're able to get both of these, 95% of the units have been untouched, you know, 1970s slash 80s interiors. Yeah. Really rare to find something like that in a very, very hot market like Greenville. 
Yeah. So what color is the bathroom subway tile? Oh, multi, multi colors, I yellow, should say. A lot, right, a lot of pastels, yellowish. It feels like Easter inside there. So yes, yellows, pinks, yeah. red, something like that. Yeah. We do a lot of that, right? So we have portfolio. We have about 700 units in Houston and 1,000 units in Atlanta, another nice. 500 units in the Cleveland area. And that's our bread and butter too, man. When I walk in and see the, the, the sea, the aqua blue yeah. subway tile that we can glaze white, I'm like, yeah, this is starting to feel like something we would buy. We do a lot of value add stuff too. That's cool. So how come yeah. you pick that type of strategy, investment strategy? What was it about that that was appealing for you when you were getting going? Yeah, I think number one, I've always been a DIY guy at heart, right? So I love the idea of coming. I've never been attracted to, oh, this brand new housing, even my, on the personal side, on the residential side. I'll get excited. When, you know, I'll give you an example. We went and bought uh, you know, our fee first beach property, which we wound up turning into short-term rental. I walked in this place. My wife's like, this place is a complete dump. Like the walls are caving in. I was like, this is perfect. So <laughs> I've always had that mentality of, you know, forget the financials for a second. That's also a benefit, right? But I, will, I love coming in and being able to turn a place around for ourselves, our investors, our tenants, and take it from A to B in a short period of time and, and just see what we've done and accomplished over, over, you know, let's say months or, you know, maybe a year's time. It's really, yeah. really powerful. Love it. So what do you, what do you think, like, you mentioned the markets change, right? So let's peel back the onion on that a little yeah. bit because we knew that these rate increases were coming from the Federal Reserve. They started talking about it actually in 2020 before COVID hit. COVID, obviously, everything went back down to zero as far as rates, yep. rates stay low, competition is fierce. And all of a sudden now rates are starting to go up. But just over the weekend, right, the 10 year treasury. Yep things tend to overreact, right? The rates tend to overcompensate. So they went really high up. You had like bank debt and even some perm debt, Fannie Fetty that was up in the fives, five and a half, 5.75. Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to settle back down a little bit with some fears of recession talk. Um, how is some of that discussion, the economics and some of these uncertainties impacted the way you evaluate deals, the way you're looking at deals, the way you're positioning your business? Yeah. So, you know, when myself, my partners go at a deal, like you said, one of the biggest factors is in fact that a lot of lend a lot of lenders, a lot of syndicators are leveraging what we call bridge debt, which may have a variable rate. Uh, so we're looking at that with a very close eye and a high level of scrutiny. And we are seeing because of that fluctuation of volatility and not really knowing what's to come. And you said there's been a little bit of relief from the debt side this past weekend, but we don't know for sure what will happen in the next two or three months. So we're, you know, we're betting on, on, the, on the side of conservatism, right? So we are seeing still a lot of competition, but a little bit is tilted in favor of the buyers, just a little bit. Um, but again, like being that multifamily is such a good hedge against inflation and because it is a much more historically stable asset than, you know, your typical, uh, you know, equity products or stocks or bonds or anything like that. There's still a lot of demand for that type of product. So in fact, there's still a lot of buyers out there. So we're still you know, seeing a heavy sense of competition, but we are seeing, you know, a little bit of price drops, a little bit of softening in prices still on the higher end of what we've seen historically in the last 10 years, of course, but a lot of demand still out there for the reasons I mentioned. Yeah, no doubt. We're in the middle of uh, actually a final call for offers here in the next 24 hours, right? Nice. So, Exciting. Top three buyers. This, this podcast will get released after all that's, you know, done. Yeah. yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, there's a whisper price hmm. and all three offers came in under whisper. Whereas three yeah. months ago, six months ago, they're all over. <laughs> you would have had it been at whisper or above yeah. to be in the, one of the top three to five. So I think the brokers were a little bit caught off guard yeah. that all the offers were slightly under. And this is right in our wheelhouse where we bought eight assets, eight different syndications with the same brokerage. So we're definitely, it's, it's our asset to get if we want it. But yeah. it was a little bit, I think they were surprised to say, oh yeah, all three of them came in slightly under. I was like, yeah, so, yeah, right. So that's what I'm saying. A little bit in favor of the buyers now. Yeah, right? not yeah. a lot. You're talking about no. a few hundred grand on a multi-million dollar asset, so it's just right. a small, you know, five percent or so. Whereas before it would have been multiple offer, multiple offer, hard earnest money, way over ask. Yep. Just to get in the game. So that's interesting to see. Um, so Andrew, as you position, you talked about bridge debt. Are you leaning then more towards? maybe, you know, five, seven year term, 10 year term, 12 year term bank debt, Fannie Freddie debt. Yeah. Are you trying to stay away from bridge at the moment? 
I'm a big fan of the fixed, you know, agency proc whenever at all possible, right? Even if at the expense of a little bit of cash flow, I like, and my investors seem to like the stability of a five, seven, even a 10 year term. In fact, we have that in two or three of the properties now, the fixed option, right? You know, ideally with lower, lower or no yield maintenance or prepayments, things like that, or at least step down. So whenever possible, I, I love the, you know, kind of confidence factor that we can lock that in. If we can't make it work and we still love the property, a bridge product with an aggressive rate cap is, is the next best option for us. Yeah, I like it. You know, even bank debt, a lot of guys are like, well, bank debt, you know, a lot of times there's more of a personal guarantee or a partial guarantee yeah. like that. It just doesn't scare me that much. When your LTV is low enough yeah. and raising and syndicating a big piece of the equity, uh, the chances of that deal defaulting and losing right. it and having any kind of personal guarantee actually come to play is such a small, small possibility. Um, you know, so if we can lock in bank with, you know, with some CapEx dollars in there and, and lock that somewhere in the, at the low fives with a seven year term, yes, you know, some personal guarantee there, which is not ideal, but I'm like, look, man, that just doesn't scare me right now. Not totally at all. agree. Totally yeah. agree. You know, prepay yeah. is pretty light compared to a Fannie Freddie product. So correct. Stuff, man. So Andrew, tell us about your syndication strategy, Redline Equity, your real estate syndication firm. People tend to do syndications differently. Uh, some guys do it, you know, kind of very traditional 70-30 with a pref. Other guys have little spins on it or ways that they do it. Help us understand what, what what's the way you typically package up a deal and the type of deal you like to buy. So I mentioned earlier, we, we really like to go after value add property, specifically multifamily. So, you know, maybe down the line, we'll, we'll get into, you know, adjacent space, like a self storage, et cetera. But for now, you know, 50 to 300 units is really our wheelhouse partnering with, you know, one or more firms, you know, for different roles. But we love the, you know, 70s to 90s vintage product in the Southeast, you know, a little bit of the Midwest, but really like, you know, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, even parts of Texas are all part of our strategy. And I think what, what sets us apart, there's a lot of big names out there who do a lot more volume than we do, but I, I like to be, and I, I don't, we know we don't need to do 10 deals a year to be competitive or that's not really part of our strategy. I'm a, you know, smaller cater to, you know, 200 investors, not 2000 and have a good rapport one-on-one -on -one with all of them. Not, you know, you're not talking to eight different investor relations people you're dealing with me or one of my partners, right? So I like that small kind of, you know, small business feel, but you know, we're, we're growing pretty rapidly, but we don't like to do, we don't need to do 10 deals a year. I'd rather cherry pick the really the top two or three or four per year. And that's fine. I mean, that's more than going to meet our goals and it allows us to maintain that tight relationship with our investors. Yeah, no, I love that. Our strategy is actually we've, you know, we've done 18 syndications, 4,300 units, but our goal every year is to buy 950 units, yeah. 950. We actually have our HQ management company is called 950 Management because, oh, cool. because we know that when you look at the net free cash flow after debt service, after at stabilization, after uh, debt, you know, debt service expenses, et cetera, mm -hmm. we're going to make about 1400 bucks, give or take yeah. per year, per unit. You multiply times 950, it's 1.2 million. It adds another $100,000 a month to our bottom line, right? And I've got two partners and things like that. And it's just like $100,000 a month, add that to our, the three of us, our personal passive income, that's the goal. Some years like last year, we did 1500 units, other years we've done 800, it kind of fluctuates around that $1,000 number. Sometimes I wonder, should we be like 2000? You know, right. to say it's not 950 management, it's 2000 management, would we be doing 2000? Because, you know, psychologically, that's what we're thinking about. Right all the time. And so similar to you, like I've got personal relationships with all of our investors and it allows us, I think, to raise more money from less people. Correct. Than having just a giant swath of people that want to throw in 50 grand or 25 grand or hundred. Correct. We've got guys doing 250 to a million, million plus because of that personal relationship. Is there anything you do, Andrew? I'm asking this for a selfish reason because yeah. I was looking for the tip for myself. Is there anything you do special for your investors to kind of make them feel special? Is there gifts that you send them or happy birthday things that you do? Is there anything special that you do for them to make them feel like, Hey man, I'm really part of Andrew's team. I, I do. And I, I like the gift idea, especially personalized gifts. And depending on the time of year, you know, whether it's Christmas or it's in the summer, like for example, we just closed on a property in, in April, summer is coming around. So we did personalized Yeti mugs and coolers that kind of go with the beach theme and family and vacations 
at Christmas time, we might do bottles of wine with the personalized letter, you know, handwritten. Again, that's hard to do at scale. And it's hard to do if you're doing, you know, a thousand investors at a time. I like to be able to package each box myself. Again, it doesn't set you up for doing 5,000 units a year, but that's not our goal, right? I like that personalization. So I like the personalized gifts. Um, we'll probably get into investor dinners, but they're sp we're spread out so much over the country, it's hard to do that. But we're getting more and more investor base in the Philadelphia area, which we're based out of. So we might, you know, in time, look to do some more one-on-one -on -one or you know, ten-on-one, twenty-on-one events. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Andrew, let's back up then to your kind of start, right? Your first property you did 2007 was a house hack. You've lived yep. in it, fixed it up, you sold it. How does that then translate into over 1,100 units or more plus yep. the stuff you're adding to your portfolio? What were some of the early mindset challenges to go from an individual one house hack to 1,000 units? And specifically, I'm thinking of some of the new maybe listeners to, the, to my show or that yep. follow you what are some of the things that you did to kind of just increase your mindset that allowed you to then start offering on a hundred, 200 unit properties? Because it really is a, it, it really screws with your mind to think I'm going to just going to go offer on this $20 million asset or this $10 million asset after doing a house hack. How does that happen for you? Yeah. So, and in short, it happened over time. And I'll just take you back, you know, back to that 2007 time frame. I was just getting you know, out of college, working professional, following the normal career path. At that point, I only knew two things. One, I didn't want to work until your mid-60s typical retirement phase and rely only on a 401k. And two, I really enjoyed real estate. I wasn't sure how, how to quite get to, from A to B at that point. So I started with a single family, expanded in that same theme for a while. And quickly, you, real, you realize you run out of money. I was fortunate to do really well at that point in the W-2. But still, you're limited to how quickly you can grow. You know, fast forward into the 2010s time frame, got into the short term rental again, really enjoyed that. I thought that might be the ticket to scale. But again, you run out of money pretty quickly. So I'm like, hmm, I still got 20, 30 years ahead of me. This is not getting me where do I be, where I want to be. Fast forward to 2018, 2019 time frame. Start, you know, I found this site called Bigger Pockets. You may have heard of it. Came across a thread on there where I, I was starting to learn the ropes of multifamily and started to realize that, like, wow, you know. Maybe I can get into this. There's so many people just like me with a similar background, similar profile that are doing this out there. Why don't I just follow in one of their more of their footsteps? So I hooked up with a local syndicator here, got in as a limited investor and passive, started to learn the ropes that way. Continued to educate myself through blogs, joined a mastermind group, got, you know, got a mentor, joined a formal coaching program. And it started, the biggest thing for me was overcoming that oh my God, this, I'm an imposter. Like I've never done this before. And then I realized so many people have done this before me. Why not me? was a question I kept asking myself. So I, the way I overcame that was really through just relentlessly educating myself, beating it into my head to the point where I gained confidence. And for me, that looked like reading 30, 40 books, listening to a hundred different podcasts, you know, getting those weekly and monthly coaching calls, doing the mastermind group, doing the group accountability sessions. And that, that could be different from everybody, but that, that was my journey. So fast forward from that 2019 timeframe to today, you know, after the first couple of deals, you really start to gain more and more confidence and your investors gain more confidence. So oh, it's not an easy start by any means, but I wish I had known that this, this is, this is within reach for any individual back in my twenties in the back in that 2007 timeframe. Yeah. Now, everything you just mentioned, the accountability coaching, the group calls, the podcast, relentless education, mm -hmm. allowed you to do two deals within five months of yep. moving into multifamily. So things happen really fast that way. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, I signed up for this program or I listen to this podcast. Nothing's happening for me. What do you think the difference was for you that allowed you to do a lot of the same things that other people do? right? Relentless education, podcasts, webinars, yeah. coaching, 
But you know, as we all know, 90 to 95% of the people that buy all these products, yeah. information products, coaching, or listen to pocket, never do anything. You yeah. close two deals within your first five months. What, what do you think that subtle difference was that allowed you to stand out and actually make it happen? So you, you kind of lead to the, you led to the answer for me, right? And it's just about what are you doing with that knowledge, that content, those, those, those relationships. So if you're just reading a book, that's great. You know, it's only the star. If you're just joining a mastermind group, it's only as good as what the effort you put into it, what you take from it, right? So if you're making these connections, are you following through? Are you taking consistent action? Are you making offers? Are you calling brokers? Are you following back up? Are you, you know, are you engaging with your investors? Are you writing your own blogs? Are you sharing, are you getting on social media and sharing your content? So it's a bit, it's 80% action, 20% education, or maybe it's, you know, some, somewhere in the middle, but like, if you're not taking action consistently, and the key word there for me has always been consistency. The first 20 times may lead to nothing or may seem like they're leading to nothing, but that 21st time or that 20th time or the 30th time may get you exactly where you want to be. Yeah. I love it. I was going to ask you about advice. Like, you know, what, what kind of advice would you give to some of our newer members? But it sounds like you just kind of gave it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the difference is, is all the education, all the action kind of mixed together, right? So many people educate themselves. They do it more for entertainment. Yeah. Like, this is like something I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to a podcast for 45 minutes or a half hour. I'll get on this webinar. And then if you don't do anything with it, it's just educate it's just it, it's just entertainment right you're not doing anything that's with. it i like to entertain people i like to talk but i'm not that entertained go see a movie if you're going to go right. spend two hours go watch top gun maverick or go watch minions or rise of Gru or whatever's out right because if you're not going to do anything with it that's all you're really doing is entertaining yourself right so you absolutely I'll, I'll add to that too you nailed it right but what what is your motivating factor for me the reading books and stuff was a source of energy like oh my god i'm getting more and more confident in what i could be doing with this now i've got my whiteboard out every week and just charting out what am i going to do monday to friday and then on each day holding yourself accountable or joining a mastermind group and then reading that off to the group and then if that works for you great but for me, it was mo it's motivating to learn. Not everybody else might just be entertained, but what is your, you know, my challenge to your listeners would be, what is your point of motivation? How are you going to hold yourself accountable taking action? Yeah, no doubt. Actually, right behind me is, and I don't know that a lot of people that are watching this on video know this, but this is like a little memorial to my dad, right? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. A half ago from Parkinson's. It was my first like entrepreneurial mentor. But the lesson behind that is that my dad said to me one time, he said, like, I, I don't know if you know this, Andrew, but I'm also a pancreatic cancer survivor, right? So pancreatic cancer, six to 8% survival rate. I'm one of, lucky to be one of the six to eight that make it. But my dad said to me, he's like, son, like you were given so much talent and so much, so much um, like resources, right? Like I've never really wanted for anything. I struggled at times, but, um, and so he said to me, he said, son, like in the second half of your life, you have to figure out like why you were spared, like you were spared for a reason. Yeah. And so that one comment is where I drive so much of my motivation from, right? It's not like being successful in other people's eyes. It's not the cows, the car. It's this one comment from my dad that said that, son, you were spared for a reason. You have so much time, so much talent, so much resources like it would almost be a shame yeah. what he meant. It'd almost be a shame if you didn't do something like spectacular with that. Yeah. Um, and so whatever that motivation is, right. Wherever you get it from, wherever you find it, doesn't matter. Like I watched that movie hustle last night. You've seen that movie hustle. That movie. Ah, it's a good one. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. Right. So like, where do you get your motivation from? And some of these guys get their motivation. Like the, the one guy from the Spain taking care of his daughter. Right. Yeah. Where does your yeah. motivation come from? And like, a lot of times people don't even need to know your motivation. And it's almost every time, Andrew, the guys that you and I that are super successful, it's not the motivation of driving the red Ferrari or the black right. you know, Phantom. It's not that at all. It's something real personal. So I think the piece of advice that I would give our audience as you and I kind of wrap up here is find a real personal reason to like get pissed off and get motivated. Mm -hmm. That I think is what separates a guy like Andrew from the guy that just watch a bunch of webinars, a guy like Andrew, that's got 1100 units and growing to the guy that's just like entertaining himself. Right. That's one of the pieces, Andrew, that I take away from interviewing you on this show. Um, Nailed it. 
Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Let me ask you real quick, a couple real quick questions, Andrew, because uh, our audience loves to hear this. What's your, what's your favorite way to find deals? Uh, as of late, uh, off market, direct to seller. Okay. And how do you do that? Is that phone calls? Is it direct mail? Is it mess? Is it, is it phone? Is it text? Yeah. So, so we've tried a, a number of different options, but the, the two that have been most effective have been text messaging and calls. So email, direct mail, not so much, but the first two have been really getting a lot of traction lately. Still like to hear from people on their phones. How about yes, that? Sir, that's right. We're attached. Last question, Andrew, who do you think has been the uh, mentor that's maybe had the biggest impact on your life and why? I wouldn't say it's a single individual. It's actually been a number of people throughout my life. And actually a lot of them have come through my, from my W2, right? So it wasn't that the natural, Hey, it's somebody I hired and went out and in the coach, but some people who didn't even realize they're being a mentor to me set me on a path. Maybe it was a path that I knew I didn't want to take. And that kind of shaped the help shape my career, my, my decisions going forward. So it wasn't Love one individual. There's a, there's a number. Love it. So listen, Andrew, thanks so much for joining us today on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Guys, the website where you can meet up with Andrew is investwithredline.com, Redline Equity LLC. Again, based out of the Southeast, value add, Midwest, very similar to my strategy. So even for my investors that are investing with me, if you're looking for additional options, maybe some, you know, diversify your general partner risk, diversify your operator risk, diversify your, your geographic risk, you know, definitely reach out to Andrew, check out his podcast as well. Um, and uh, we'll put that stuff in the show notes. So Andrew, thanks so much for joining us today on Accelerated Investor. That was a blast. I went by quickly, man. Thanks for having me. You bet. Well, guys, there you have it, man. What a great, powerful and fast interview with Andrew. I really had a great time with him. Um, and you know, he and I are in a lot of the same markets, the Southeast, the Midwest. Uh, we actually talked offline after afterwards about the Columbus market. His wife's office is in the Columbus area. And uh, man, I just love interviewing new people and getting to know them and what their strategy is. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and a review. Go ahead, open it up right now on iTunes. Tap the little five-star button. Leave us a little review right now. Don't wait. Because if you wait five seconds after this is over, you're probably never going to come back to it. So if you like this information and you're getting something out of it, let me know. Also, please share this all over social media, right? Share it with your family, friends, your people on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, Twitter. That would mean so much to me as well. Also, don't forget to join our private Facebook group. If you go into Facebook and you look up Accelerated Real Estate Investor, you're going to find over 2,000 people in a very active Facebook group talking about real estate strategies. You can join that for free. And finally, Andrew mentioned coaching, consulting, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, go visit joshcantwellcoaching.com. Uh, that's the site where you can apply to work with me directly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've had the benefit of, of you know, mentoring thousands of people since I did my first live event all the way back in 2006 going on 16 years, I've had the benefit of interviewing many people, coaching many people, mentoring thousands of people over the last 16 years to have amazing real estate careers. And I want to add you to that list. We'll see you next time on Accelerated Investor. Take care. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, Help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com.